Sam Wilson here, <clears throat> Sam's Antique Motors. Today I'm gonna build a wiring harness for a Farmall B tractor. And uh, the reason I'm making this video is that I have a little bit of a unique situation, I think, that this Farmall B has a, a six volt positive earth and it has a magneto. And I've been unable to find a wiring diagram that really talks about how you do that uh, it has a further complication that it has a four terminal voltage regulator. Some of these had a three terminal, some of them had a four terminal, and some of them had just a straight cutout that took advantage of the resistor in the switch in order to have a low charge and a high charge. So mine has a voltage regulator with it. So I've done a fair amount of research and I've gotten some feedback from some people that I think are knowledgeable on the subject, including John T from uh, uh, a lot of posts on yesterday's tractor forum. So I, I think I got this about right, and I'm gonna go through uh, making this harness. I've ordered some wire, I've ordered some Terminator clips, I've ordered some really nice uh, wire loom from Atkins Pierce that works really nicely. I've used it on several uh, antique cars and trucks. So I'm gonna go through this process, and uh, hopefully I'll provide a link to the Atkins and Pierce website in my in my description and I'll go ahead and post the, the PDF of the wiring diagram that I've made <clears throat> that I believe is correct and, and showing how this all gets hooked up. So with that, let's get started. To start, I thought I'd show you kind of what this looked like to start. I, I think this, I believe this to be an original wiring harness. It's got the original loom on it. It was woven onto the wire. Uh, the main wire that comes off the the uh, amp meter is a white wire, I think with a black tracer, uh, no, a red tracer. So this is a 10 gauge wire, white with a red tracer. And the, the light switch wire, the load wire, is a white wire with a black tracer. The other wire is a black wire that goes down to the uh, headlights. And the wire that comes out and breaks over to the starter is a black wire, 10 gauge wire. So this was loomed really from all the way from the head, head stock all the way down to where it breaks out. Actually, this is the head stock. It came from here all the way down within about four inches of where it breaks out for the regulator. Um, and I had cut this out to figure out what this joint was, but this black wires, these two black wires that are going to the, to the headlamps, they have a, a union right here. And then they broke out of this this wire woven wire loom, uh, fabric loom, right about there. So that's pretty much what I had to start. Uh, and I, I'd say I believe this to be a, a, a correct original wiring harness. Uh, I don't really have any, I don't know that much about these tractors, but I don't have any way of confirming that. But it, it certainly looks like it's original. It's really stiff um, and looks to be original. So I'm going to put this in the save pile in case I need it for reference, but there you have it. We'll get started making up a loom. This is the back side of the instrument cluster and switch on a Farmall B. And you can see here that there's a wire that's coming from, this is the discharge side of the amp meter. So I'm gonna call that the negative side. And this has got a wire jumping down here to this lower connection of the fuse. It also has a black wire, which is a 10 gauge wire, that's going to the uh, uh, starter lug. So that's putting power into the amp side. Then on the load side, the positive side of the amp meter, it has another white 10 gauge wire. This wire also has a red tracer in it. And that wire comes all the way down around here and it comes out at the generator uh, voltage regulator. There's also down here on the lower end, this wire right here, looks like it's been replaced because these are not the original connections, but this is a, a black wire that goes, uh, one of these wires goes to the rear light this little blue one goes to the rear light. That's a tiny wire, probably 14 gauge. And then this black wire feeds uh, 
all the way again up to the front. Uh, and, and I believe powers the lights. Um, there's one other wire that comes off down here at the bottom right here. And this is a white wire with a red tracer. And it's pretty small. It's probably 14 gauge. And I believe that also comes up and goes to the voltage regulator, probably on the load side. So I'm gonna get a diagram and check all this out. Uh, and then I'll, I'll diagram that and then I'll show you how to build this harness from scratch. First off, I've gathered up all the supplies I need. So I bought, uh, there's probably enough wire here to do two or three, but I bought some 10 gauge black and white wire and some 14 gauge red, white, and black wire. I actually have some 10 gauge uh, cloth loom from a project, uh, Chris Craft, I did about 10 years ago. So I'm gonna actually use that for the magneto wire because it'll be exposed. I also got tired of jacking with finding all these little clips. So from McMaster Car, I just bought every possible clip on every kind of gauge that I would want, along with a pile of heat shrink and got that organized and then i bought this loom and again this is enough loom to do many tractors but i use it all the time on other cars so i bought some quarter inch loom Let's see if i can find an end of it here uh so quarter inch which is really about enough to put kind of one to two wires in and then i bought some three eighths inch loom right here and this is enough to put kind of three wires in and this is a, a self-closing loom so it unwraps it's a little dicey to get the wiring in it but it it untwists and then you can put the wire this around the wire and then it coils back around the wire it works really nicely and um, I found this wire loom by accident but this looks really close to what the asphalt coated uh, woven loom would have looked like, you know, in the 30s, 40s, and, and 50s. So I really like that. And then I bought some half inch loom, which is big enough to put kind of four or so, maybe even five wires in it. So I bought all these. Each one of these spools is about 25 feet long. Each one of them was about more or less about $17, $18. So it's, it's not a really expensive product. And I've really been happy with it customer service is great also and then I have uh, my wiring diagram which I've spent a fair amount of time perfecting and, and validating so um, we're going to build it off of this and I'll post a link to this uh, uh, PDF in the in the description so with that I think I'm going to get the, distrib the generator and first build the two leads up here that connect the field and the armature connection up to the four terminal uh, voltage regulator. So this <clears throat> generator connection calls for 10 gauge black and 10 gauge red. So I'm going to just go ahead and put the end terminals on this. And uh, to do that, uh, the, the, the connection onto this, onto these field terminals was a pretty big uh, nut lug. So um, I've cut me some little pieces of this 3 16th heat sh shrink and I've got this little uh, ring terminal. I'm going to go ahead and do this one with the ring. I want that to be just a shade bit longer. And uh, a lot of people want to solder these terminals, but I kind of did some research on that some time ago and you really don't need to solder these terminals. And in fact, if you do, you actually cause this, you know, vehicles have vibration in them. And when you, when you solder this terminal onto these wires, it puts a, a rigid connection right here at the end and this vibrates. So if you put the rigid connection on there and solder it, then over time, it, the vibration will actually break that solder joint and the metal fatigue will, will take out uh, uh, and, and break that joint. So I don't solder these. 
I bought these really nice crimping pliers at Napa. They're made by Carlisle. They're really high quality. They got a stripper and then they got a crimper. So uh, when you just, and it's got a little special deal right here on the deal that puts this, this crimp in the back of this thing. It makes a really nice crimp. And uh, I just do it that way. And, uh, and then I push the heat shrink up on there. And sometimes I do it with a heat gun. Sometimes it's faster to just do little connections like this just with a flame and uh, heat shrink it on there. So very nice looking connection right there. And according to this diagram, this connection goes from the field, which is marked with an F on this case. There's an A on the armature generator connection up to the field on the voltage regulator. So I'm gonna put this on here and it, I rebuilt this generator uh, uh, in a previous uh, in a previous uh, video. So I'm kind of looking at this to figure out what's the best way to do this. And I kind of like it just coming off horizontal off of this one. And we're gonna bring it up to the field connection on this voltage regulator, kind of just like that. So I think I'm gonna make it about that long. I'm just kind of sizing this length. Um, on my diagram, I had marked that as a uh, 12 inch. And I'm gonna amend my diagram a little bit because I actually made that about nine and a half inches. So, um, I'm gonna amend that slightly, just to give you the, you know, you, if you're making this yourself, you can take it and do it however you like, but I'm trying to give you some good dimensions uh, based on this to start with. So if you're fitting this to your generator, you can do it just like I did, cut it and fit it where it looks nicely. Now on this end, I think these are actually set up for a spade terminal to go up underneath this, this screw and go so it's supposed to be an open terminal, not a ring terminal. So again, I'm going to, uh, and that 3 16 just barely goes up on there. So I think I'm gonna actually put this with a one size bigger on this one. So I've got the black on there. I'm gonna put this on there. I think I'm gonna trim that just a tiny bit shorter. And then I always set it up where this little uh, punch in the back of it goes to the back of the, of the spade, just like that. Hold it in there straight. <clears throat> and then once that gets crimped down on there, pull this back up. Okay, so do it like that, pull this back up. And uh, I'm just gonna kind of temporarily secure it right now, but that should be kind of nicely. We'll pull that down where it's nice and parallel. And I'm gonna revise my diagram to show nine and a half inches before I post it. <clears throat> So then we want to do the same thing with um, a uh, red wire. So uh, I said I'm going to need about eight inches there. And what that's doing is connecting from the armature. There's an A side on this post to the, uh, uh, there's actually a ground lug. There's kind of a ground lug that's up underneath this terminal. So it comes in from here. Sometimes they come off the side, but this one comes in from the underside. So it's gonna be a shorter, it's gonna be a shorter piece. So I'm gonna just get me a, enough to work with here. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna trim this off. Get us a nice piece. Sometimes I do it a little extra and then trim it just so it's nice and 
nice and flush on the end like that and this one is fabric loom so this is for sure going to take a little extra size i don't know what this i think these are i got some 3 sixteenths and i got some quarter inch so this one again i'm going to use this bigger this is a 10 gauge uh, that's not the right one let's see when did i use a second ago this one gauge with a big enough to go over the end of that So this one, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it underneath this other one because it's going to wind up going underneath it. So I'm going to pull it up underneath it. Actually, I think I want to make it go the long way around so they don't intersect. I think that looks a little bit better to have this one coming off direct and this one going this way. And then I'm going to make this come up and hook into this piece so it looks like it's just about the right length as I cut it. It's a happy accident. measure that to adjust my deal so looks like that's about eight and a half inches so I'm gonna make this eight and a half on my diagram and we're going to do the same thing we're going to put this bigger spade lug terminal on the end uh, instead of a ring on the other side So that'll come up and connect into that. I'll have to take the regulator off probably to put that in there. So I'm going to just kind of put these temporary. Um, and I'm going to wind up taking that off anyway when I mount it on the tractor. So then this L terminal, there's a battery terminal and an L terminal. So the battery goes to the load side of the ammeter up in the control panel. And the load side is going to go down to the fuse input into the switch. I'll get the switch up and show you how that wires here in a minute, but so those will eventually connect onto here. So with that, I got these two pieces made and we're gonna go to the next piece. Next, I fabricated the wire that goes from the switch to the magneto. So this is the pull switch. I've bead blasted it, parkerized the nuts and bolts, polished up the little cast knob this was all froze up but i got it unfroze up and this just has one connection to the bottom of this because all this is doing is is putting a ground there's no current that goes through this all this is doing is putting a ground to the magneto so i have the old wire here which measured out to 60 inches this connects onto the bottom of this switch and when you when you push this down i think when it goes down it grounds it 
can't remember if it's up or down, but I think it must be down because down is grounded. So when you ground it, the magneto won't work. So this is not carrying any current. So this can easily be a 14 gauge wire. In my case, I have this 10 gauge wire that has a really nice cloth wrapped red piece on it. And this is a standalone wire, not in a loom that you see. So I've gone ahead and measured this out to be 60 inches long. So I cut it 60 inches, I put two terminals on it, and we can call that done. So that's the old piece, this is the new piece. I did it out of 10 gauge, you can easily do it out of 14 gauge, as someone noted on one of my comments when I inquired what that should be, and you're good to go. Next, I fabricated the little line that goes from the light switch to the rear headlight. So on this light switch, there's, I think, four positions. There's low charge, high charge, D, and B. So low, low H, D, B, L, H, D, B. Low charge, high charge, D, and B. So on the back of this, if you notice, there's a number one, there's a number two, and there's a number three up on the top of this. So the, the line charge comes in from here, and this is, is coming, uh, uh, providing power into the switch. Once it goes into the switch, this is the headlight, and then there's a resistor that goes down to this lower portion. The rear headlight, the rear light, goes into this number two switch. On the switch is this resistor bar. This is not used if you have a four terminal regulator. If you have a cutout, then it goes through here and it uses the L and the D through this resistor on this little bar to determine whether you're getting a high charge or a low charge out of the distributor. But in our case, the four terminal voltage regulator is gonna do that work, so we're not gonna use this piece. So we're gonna connect eventually the line from the voltage regulator into there. We're gonna put the rear tail light onto uh, this number two lug right here. Um, probably, I don't have my screwdriver with me. Yeah, I can do it by hand. So we're gonna connect the number, the number two lug right into that, and then the end of that'll go to the tail light. In my case, I measured out 36 inches. I think I actually measured 40 just to make sure I had enough. I may change that on my diagram. And I left the other end of this run wild because I'm gonna make sure that when I get the tail light back onto the onto the tractor that I can run that in a nice neat way all the way back to the little light and then and then pull it tight and then terminate that uh, just at the right length. So once I do that, I'll adjust my diagram, but that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put on the number two lug. So now we got that done. Now I'm gonna fabricate the headlamp, forward headlamp switch. It comes off the top of the switch. We'll go into this wire loom. I cut me a piece that's 76 inches long and then I cut two more pieces, one that's 22 inches and one that's 28 inches. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the rear headlight. I'm gonna let these ends just run wild till I get them all the way to the headlights. But we're gonna make a junction, just the way it was on the original, just inside the wire loom at the front. So what I've done here is I've got a larger uh, butt connector and when, and I'm gonna wind up putting these two pieces into this butt connector so it's a little bit bigger to get the two in there. And so when I do that, since this is gonna be a single, I've got this side just doubled back on itself. So I cut it a little longer, doubled, doubled it back. And so when I push that in there, that'll make a nice, tight, snug connection into that side. And I usually try to find the little dimple and I put the, the button right on the dimple side so it looks nice, although no one will ever see it, but it makes me comfortable. And I crimp that side onto there. So now we've got a nice butt crimp there. And then we're gonna take these two, and I think I'm gonna probably strip them back a little bit further than what I have, and, uh, and put and spin them together, and put them in that butt connector. 
since I don't have terminations on the end of this, I don't have to worry about the heat shrink at this point because I can slip it on here as soon as I get this butt connection made up. It's a little bit tough to get those things wound up in there, especially when I let it spin out. Still got one wire hanging out. Okay. Wound up with two wires that didn't make it in the deal, so I'm gonna just break those off. Okay, so now that I got that done, I'm gonna line up my thing just like I did on the other one. couple of these little extra filaments that didn't get in the deal so we're gonna just metal fatigue those off maybe there we go so now we got a nice butt connection and I'm gonna put a little heat shrink on that I can probably gonna have to take the. So I'm gonna put a little bit longer heat shrink on this one. This is gonna go in the wire loom. I probably don't need quite so much. So. so we'll feed that onto there. Find my other working end, which is right there. down to that, centered up on the butt. Take out right there. Again, you can do this with a heat gun and I got one sitting right there, but sometimes it takes longer for the heat gun to, to heat up and get warm enough to, to shrink it than it does to just take a lighter and on little bitty connections like that. So now we have this piece, which is the light connection. So I got a, a terminal on the end of this. It goes down to a joint, uh, a union, and then splits off for the left and right forward headlamp. So that piece is good to go until we're ready to get to the wire loom. And we'll get to that here in just a second. Now I'm fa fabricating this main loom that comes from the amp meter and the switch and goes down here to the four voltage regulator and then spins off into the starter. So there's four wires here and I wanna do something a little bit tricky um, that once I get this thing all built and wanna put it in the loom, I'm gonna wanna keep these wires kinda of tight to fit in that loom nicely. So I have some, I don't, I think this is half inch uh, heat shrink and I'm gonna cut this into short sections so that I can put this along this line, these this harness to keep this nice and tight to going in the, and straight going in the loom. So I'm gonna fabricate each of these four pieces. Actually, I've already built the headlight, but I'm gonna fabricate the other three pieces. And then before I terminate the ends to go into the voltage regulator, I'm gonna slide this heat shrink in to get that all straight. So I fabricated the, the load charge out of the 10 gauge white. This was originally on my harness, a white wire with a black tracer but I couldn't find for any kind of reasonable price the white, the black tracer. And you're only gonna wind up seeing about three inches of this. So it just wasn't worth uh, two bucks a foot to get a black tracer. So I'm just doing it with white. So I've got the white one done. Now I'm gonna fabricate the, uh, the, uh, the battery input terminal line that comes from the load on the, the load terminal on the voltage regulator. And then we're gonna make the starter battery switch. Okay, now I've got the four main leads coming from the from the light switch and the amp meter. So I've got my, I can find the ends here. 
I've got the, the main lead from the amp meter <clears throat> down to the battery. I've got the line charge to the starter. I've got the, the other end of it is, I've got the 14 gauge that goes to the load on the voltage regulator. And I got the 14 gauge that goes to the forward headlights. So we're going to take all of these pieces. Again, I'm trying to kind of do this a little trickier. You could just easily do it with a little bit of uh, electrical tape. But, and as long as you put it in a wiring harness, nobody's going to ever see this anyway. But I kind of like to do it cleanly. So I've cut some little inch, one inch strips of, of, uh, uh, heat shrink and I'm going to feed this up on this line I'm doing this before I get all the terminations on it so I'm going to feed this heat shrink up this up this harness get each of these pushed through there I've tested this before and this heat shrink will take I believe these five uh, four wires I have to kind of position them to get it over this little junction box that's in here Okay, now we just got to get this untangled and up to the head. Okay, so now when this all goes together, I've got my alternator and my switch and this white wire is going to come off of this side of this amp meter. I said regulator, I meant amp meter. So the white wire is going to come off of this switch, this side of the amp meter. This black wire is going to come off the other side. So it needs to just be probably just slightly positioned just a little bit further than the and the other one. So those sit about like that. So if I put if I put the white wire on that side, the black wire on that side. Now we want the this black wire, which is going to be the headlight wire, it's going to come up and go onto this wire. And this white wire is going to come in pretty much down at the bottom on here. So I'm trying to just get my links kind of set up more or less where they're going to be. We don't need quite that much. Probably about right there. So what I've done is I've positioned this, this white wire to come onto here, this headlamp wire to come on up to here. I wonder if it'd be cleaner to come might be cleaner to come around on the other side. Might be cleaner to come in just like that. So we're gonna pull a little bit of that back out. A little bit more of that back out. So when we get this all set up, this is gonna go onto here. This is gonna go onto here. This is gonna go onto here. So that's about the right length. So at the end of the day, the little the the light bar is the same position as the white bar the the starter is just a shade further out 
and then I pulled the other one back about four and a half inches back. So we're gonna take these wires and bring this heat shrink up into about right there, which is about where the loom is gonna start. And I'm gonna shrink that up. All right, so now I got those all bundled up nicely. And again, you could do that with electrical tape. I'm just trying to be tricky here. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna keep these in a line, and I'm gonna feed some more heat shrink to put a heat shrink about ever six inches to keep these things together. Noting that this black wire that goes to the starter is gonna break out of this loom at about 30 inches to go across to the starter. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this heat shrink on, get that broken out and uh, go ahead and do that all the way down this loom just so it's nice and straight and, and looks good. All right, now I've got these ends measured out. I put this heat shrink all the way down this, trying to kind of line these wires up as much as possible to get them where they'll go in the loom nice and smoothly. I broke out the wire that goes over to the starter here at about 30 inches. And then I continued this all the way down so it came out. And then I terminated a spade on the end of these two wires going to the voltage regulator, which happened to come out exactly perfect even. And then I'm gonna again leave these unterminated till I get the headlights on. So the only thing really to do now is to run the loom on this. And this is the one that goes across to the starter. Notice I got a slightly bigger uh, terminal out here to get on that starter terminal and looks like I measured that just a little bit too long so I'm going to trim that just a little bit so this is this this loom and it expands to go around the wire um, and sometimes it's a little dicey to get it in there because it's it really wants to wrap around the wire but I really like the way this stuff works and the Atkins Pierce representative called me to say, how do you like the product? Which I thought was pretty cool. At the time I hadn't gotten it yet, which triggered that it had actually been shipped out a week ago and it got to me in two days from, I can't remember where they're located. And it took the postal service a week to get it from uh, the postal service office to my box, but that's the federal government for you. So, um, you just got to kind of patiently work this into this loom. Um, and once you get it in there, it really turns out nicely. I say it's a little dicey to get it. I haven't, I didn't ask the guys, there's some kind of trick to doing this, but I probably should have. I used another product that was similar to this and um, it goes on a little easier, but this has this really nice look to it, which I really like. Um, again, it's, I've, I've got some of the original, there we go. So once I get it kind of in there where I think it wants to go, um, then I take it and I make one kind of last pass just to make sure that this is wound consistently around there. It looks like it is. There we go. Trim off a couple of these little hairs. I don't know if I can singe this like nylon or not, but it might be worth giving it a whirl. Yep, it looks like, looks like that kind of cleaned up that edge. So now I have this wire that goes over to the starter in a little loom. And now what I'm going to do is take the bigger loom and put it basically from the control cluster all the way to the end. Um, and I think I'm going to use, I'm not sure whether I'm going to use the 3 8 Let's um, see if the 3 8 will take all four of these. 
Well, it looks like the three eighths will take all four of these, no problem. So I'm probably gonna use the three eighths. So I'm gonna just measure that out from about there. We're gonna break it out of the main loom at, for the starter wire. And we're gonna continue this all the way down uh, to where it breaks, where it's just past. This is the junction part for the lights and that's the installation. So I'm gonna probably bring this down to where it's pretty close to the regulator, which would be about right there. Okay, and as you can see, for 60 bucks, I bought enough of this to do about uh, 40. <laughs> I don't even do 40, but it would definitely do five or six uh, regulators. And I think I spent about 100, I think each one of these rolls, it's a little less than a buck a foot. So each one of these rolls is probably um, 10 or 15 bucks a piece. So one, two, three, four, five. So 60, uh, 30, 60, 75 plus another 25 of that. So roughly for 125 bucks, I got enough to do uh, wiring looms till I die. So including this one. So now I'm gonna feed this onto this, uh, onto this wire here, starting right here. And then I'll show you what it looks like when I get it all done. Okay, now I have this loom started up here. It goes down about 30 inches. The starter lead breaks out of the loom. And then this follows along all the way down here to where it breaks out for the uh, regulator. So with that, we pretty much have it done. And again, this, it, this is from Atkins and Pierce. So here's the invoice. I bought 75 feet for $70. So including shipping and tax. So it works out to be about a buck a foot called enclose and comes in 25 foot lengths. You can get it in, in just about any color, but it's a expandable uh, conduit. And it's from Atkins, Atkins and Pierce. And uh, I don't see a website on here, but I'm sure it's just Atkins and Pierce. 1-800-837 seven four seven seven um really good product used it a couple of times again they don't have they're in uh, kentucky you don't have a website <clears throat> but there you go so i got this all put together um i did just put one little discreet uh zip tie right here just to hold that together i'll probably pull that off and get a piece of fabric uh uh friction tape and put on it and I'll probably do the same thing down here on the end just to keep that all together but but for the most part uh, this wiring harness is ready to go on the on the vehicle um, and I've got all the components here that's the main harness this is the uh, magneto cable this is the rear light harness going into the switch which I cleaned up and polished the knob um, and connecting up over to the uh, throttle linkage uh, kill switch. So uh, we got everything there done. Got a nice uh, amp meter. And uh, so there you have it. Well, we pretty much got it done. So it took about maybe an hour to terminate all these pieces. We now have the rear light switch ready to go for the on the cluster switch. We got that all cleaned up and polished. We got the main harness that runs from the uh, control cluster. Each end's terminated all the way down, splits out to that starter. And we have the, the uh, uh, main run switch here that terminates at the magneto. So all of that loomed up properly, looking nice. Uh, took, you know, maybe an hour, maybe an hour and a half. Um, and I spent, you know, the loom itself is a buck a foot. Um, you can buy, uh, but it comes in, I think, a 25 foot roll. It might come in a shorter roll, but I buy it in 25 foot rolls. So I got the, uh, the loom and I got enough to do. I'm working on a 52 aerial motorcycle right uh, behind me here that, that I need some loom. So I got enough to do a bunch of stuff. 
And uh, the wire was about 15 bucks a roll, times I think about five rolls to get the different gauges and colors. You really don't necessarily have to have colors. I tried to match up the, the proper wire, but you know, the only thing you see, these were black wires, and the only thing you see of this is about four inches of the white wire. So I'm not sure it's worth spending a whole lot of money to get uh, uh, the white with red tracer and white with black tracer wire that looks like came on the original harness, at least that's the one that I have, um, because you really don't see any of it if you put it in a loom. So with that, uh, hope you enjoyed this, hope you learned something. If you did, please subscribe to my channel and uh, like the video. If you got any comments, uh, put them in the comment box and hope to see you again on a future segment. Have a nice day. Download the RestoRat app today to begin managing, tracking, and documenting your restoration project.